Sorry, I need my voice. Okay. So this morning's sermon is from 1 Corinthians. It's a sermon written by Paul. Paul wrote a letter and he sent it to a specific church in Corinth because they had a lot of baby Christians. So they needed to be taught the right way. So when a church has a lot of baby Christians, they can have problems that just pop up over and over in the church, in the congregation. Because Christians, you know, they're still babies. So they respond to the world's problems like a baby. So that does cause problems. So when you hear about a church that's sick, you know, different churches that are sick, it's because that church has a lot of baby Christians. It's not growing. It's not growing spiritually. They're immature Christians, and that causes problems because when problems pop up, and any kind of problem, their response is a worldly response. And that causes this church, the church to become sick. So that's why it's very, very, very important what you learn here today Every Sunday, during Bible study, what you learn in church, to bring that with you and apply it to your life. Because that's the only way you can grow. It's the only way you can mature as a Christian. And how you react to the world's problems, like a Christian, instead of the worldly way. There's a big difference. Problems in marriage, problems in family, with finances, with your health, problems with anything, work, school, anything. It's important that when we have problems that we react as Christians. Because we have the right way and the wrong way. We know the right way and the wrong way to react. We know if it's the wrong way, it'll become a bigger mess. So... Christ is there with us to carry us through this, so he can help us solve these problems. It's just very important that we don't learn and then leave it at the pews and then leave church. That means you're not growing. That means you're still called a baby Christian, and it's very important. And I believe, you know, this letter was written. We open the book, open the Bible. We can apply this to DICC. And we can apply it out there in the world too. So I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. So verse 10 says, this is Paul that's writing it. Paul wrote this and said, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that, who? Who is he saying? That? The Lord Jesus. Is this going to work? There we go. All. Not some of you. Wouldn't be successful if just you did it, you did your work as a mature Christian, and then, but you don't, and then, but you do, and, you know, so it, it would, there would still be problems and turmoil. So if you have turmoil in the church, guess what? You're going to bring that turmoil into your home. You're going to bring that turmoil into your marriage. You will bring that into your family, into your work, into school. Everywhere that you go, you're going to bring that with you. You must, it says all, all of you, I'm begging all of you that you agree with one another in what you say and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. Wow, that is a powerful verse. Powerful words. Paul said, I'm begging you to agree, all of you to agree. And then you'll be united. You will think alike. And when you agree. But, I mean, do you think maybe... I mean, how can we all agree the same? That's impossible. 
We don't think the same. That's impossible. It can't be. We're, we're not all going to interpret the Bible the same. Of course we, you know, one verse, we all look at this one verse, and we all have different interpretations of that. And that's okay. We all believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We believe in heaven. We believe in repentance and baptism. We believe the same things here, right? That's true. I mean, we do have the same beliefs, but this is talking about if you call yourself a Christian, but then you hate each other, you're fighting with each other, you're criticizing each other, you're jealous of each other or trying to control each other, what happens? Turmoil. We know that Satan is working. He'll find your weakness and he'll put something there. He'll find your weakness and put something there. He does this in all of us. And so it's spiritual warfare every day, all day. It's true. It's difficult. But your response to that situation, what's important. And your response to that situation, maybe you're not getting the right response from another person, but it's important that you respond the right way. We all know that Satan is Satan's number one tool for causing turmoil is what? In marriage, what's the number one tool that Satan uses to cause your marriage to be a mess? Or, you know, different, different turmoil. My opinion, the number one tool is, come on, tell me. Throw some stuff out there. Lying, what'd you say? Arguing? I can't see. Money, that's true. Skipping church, yeah, of course. Children, raising children. Not reading the Bible, making mistakes. Not reading it every day, and if you read it every day, you'd have less mistakes. What did you say? Problems in your marriage? Running away from church? Yes, it's sad to see all of that. It's very sad to see. And you know how I feel about that. If you have problems in your life, your life becomes a mess, people tend to stay at home instead of coming to church. That is the wrong time to stay home. Or, if your life goes really smoothly, then you think, oh, I don't need church, and you stay home. We need to be here every single week. Unless you're sick and you can't drive. Period. I mean, Satan's number one tool, I think, that he uses to cause turmoil in our lives and make our lives miserable is jealousy. Jealousy is ugly. Jealousy is powerful. Jealousy makes you fight with your spouse in less than a second. It makes you leave church because you think, I'm not happy with that person over there. That person, they're, they're just not doing things right. Their behavior's not right. I'm sick of it. So I can't be in church with that person. But that's jealousy. That's what's behind those things is jealousy. So it's wrong, and we need to throw it out of our lives. And you will see spiritual maturity if you do that. So in Greek, there's a word that means it's eris. That means, oh, oh, schism, I'm sorry, it means fracture. Divisions. So Paul uses the Greek word, schism, which means fracture. So when a fracture happens, you know, people criticize. So if you gossip against each other or backstab each other or are jealous of each other, try to control, it will cause a fracture in the church. So when the church has a fracture, Satan comes right in, and that's it. It's over. When you see churches split, when you see churches um, go under, you see Satan just continuing to fracture those churches, and it's successful for him. 
So fracture is a good word because if a fracture, if you don't pay atten attention to that, what happens? What will happen to it? It'll get wider and wider and wider. And that's it. And that's how a church fails. That's how marriages fail. That's how relationships fail. Finances. Um, school. That's how all these failures happen in the church. Because we ignore the fracture or we allow it to happen. And that's wrong. So verse 11. It says, My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. So it's important to know the woman, Chloe, she came straight to Paul and she let him know that she was having problems. There was quarreling that was happening. And Paul felt comfortable mentioning her name and saying that they were having problems with arguing. That's good. That's open communication. I want you to come to me and let me know if something's going on with people. Or if you have an issue that you're trying to solve yourself, I want you to please come to me and I will help you and I'll pray with you and I will help the problems to be resolved. But if you say they did something and you keep it hidden who it is, that doesn't work. We need to be open. We need to be able to, to, to face it directly so that we can solve it. And then we can grow as mature spiritual Christians. Verse 12 says, Paul says, What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is there a problem? There's a problem in that church. That's obvious. So you can tell that they're baby Christians. Because babies like to cry and complain and scream and they don't like things. So sometimes, no matter what you say, people still aren't happy. Sometimes it doesn't matter what you do, people still aren't happy. I want to hear from people. I want our spiritual maturity to grow so much that I want you to learn how to come to me and tell me what you like about DICC. What you love about DICC. I want you to come to me and tell me, like, oh, the voice interpreter did a great job. I want you to say thank you. Oh, it was wonderful. Or, like, who sang this morning? Oh, they did such a good job. Thank you and praise them. I want you to learn how to change your negative into a positive. Complain. Why do we complain? Kind of an FYI. The worship team and me... We work really really hard about what we can do better. We try to figure out what we can do better, how we can grow, how we can become better servants, how we can do all these things. We already work on ourselves. And sometimes we go home and we, you know, really hard on ourselves. And we think, oh, I did terrible, or I could have sang better, or I could have sung better, or I could have taught better. We already are hard on ourselves, right? Right? And you guys know you're hard on yourselves, right? So you don't need to be criticized and judged by another person. They already are hard on themselves. So what we should do, what we need to do in the church, as a church family and as children of God, is we need to go up to each other and praise them and say thank you. Thank you, Sydney Vaughn. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Jenny. For yesterday, for going to their apartment and a Saturday, going on a Saturday. I mean, people cherish their Saturdays. That's the only day that you can, you know, do things that you need to do. You can sleep in. You can stay in your pajamas all day if you want to. I mean, Saturdays are great. But they went on a Saturday to Kansas City, Kansas and taught that family how to cook. How to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Can you imagine people in our country don't know how to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? I mean, that could 
give him food. So thank you. So yay. But I want us to learn how to see positive things in everything, in everything we do. Positive things in people. Look for positive things in each other. If you struggle inside with something or someone in the church or in your marriage or in your family or your school, work, whatever, I want you to try to think how to discipline yourself and to tell yourself, I will look at that person through Christian eyes. I will look at that person and that situation through mature Christian eyes. And I will see something positive. I will. Period. And then Satan will say, man, and he'll leave. It's true. It'll work. The human, your, your, your human spiritual life will mature. It's hard because of our human nature, but you can do a lot of wonderful things like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's the same thing. It's spiritual warfare. You can say, I need to do this, but that person, oh, he did this and this and this and this. And then you think, oh, spiritual maturity. Okay, that person is a good person. That person came to church. That person, and then you go back to the other thing. But man, it's constantly a battle. It's a constant battle. But through the power of Jesus Christ and his grace and his unlimiting or unlimited blessing, you will see how to be positive. You will see it. I promise you will. But you have to do your part. You have to practice. Practice, practice, practice over and over and over. You have to say no to Satan and say that person is wonderful. They work hard. And then you have to tell Satan no. And that person, you know, helps the church. Or, you know, you just have to constantly say no to Satan and say yes to, to being positive through that person. It's spiritual warfare. But it will work. Verse 13 through 15. Paul said, is Christ divided? So what? Do you think Jesus Christ himself was divided? No. We can't be divided in the church either. We are all believers of the Son of God. We can't be divided. We can't. So I'm going to jump, jump to verse 16. Verse 16. It says, Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. So baptism is important. I mean... I can't remember how many people that he baptized, but baptism does not save you. Accepting Jesus Christ saves you. Acknowledging Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our Messiah, and repenting and asking Christ to come into our heart, that saves you. When we're baptized, that's just to show the world, yes, we did recognize it and confess our sins to the Lord, and I did change my life, and I'm being baptized and being born again as a Christian. Verse 17. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Christ crucified is God's power and wisdom. So that verse is important for you to recognize or realize that when a church is divided, it gets divided over silly things. That causes arguing. The cross should be your focus. You should focus on that when you're here. Not, you know, what other people are doing or things that you don't like or you think, I don't like the snack. That person brought snack, it's always dry. You know, that's really silly. It's worthless reason. 
So that person didn't bring a good drink. Oh, or how about saying thank you for bringing food? So where's my husband? Al? I think he left. So Al worked hard this morning. I'm not meaning to say guys can't cook, so don't. But I can't. I can't cook, and I'm a female, so I'm not saying that. But Al, this morning, he got up earlier than normal, and he made cookies for you guys. So I need to tell him thank you. I mean, that was nice of him. He's not going to tell you that he worked hard this morning making those cookies and checking them in the oven. And, you know, when you open the oven, the heat comes out, and it's hot. And, you know, he just... He didn't want him to burn. He didn't, you know, I kept saying, why do you keep checking him? I said, I don't want him to burn. I want him to be soft. And I'm like, oh, that's nice of him. You know, he really worked hard for you guys this morning making those cookies. So please thank him because they're soft. And, you know, anyway, you got to make sure we praise him this morning. So. so I want you to focus on the cross. I want, it, would, it will help you to be positive. Positive all the time. Verse 18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are believing, or who are being saved, it is the power of God. The cross helps you to not be divided. The cross will have, there will be divisions. There's a group of people that are saved and not saved. So that's why we need to focus on the cross. Many churches are destroyed from the inside. Church members work against each other, and then they bring that out into the world. And that's why you see mess, turmoil in churches, and schools, and work, and marriage, and everything. It's because they're in here, and there's turmoil in here, and then they bring it out into the world. And here we need to be united, we need to be positive, and then we need to bring that out and share that with other people. Sometimes, you know, when a person just keeps picking and picking and picking, I know so many that, there are so many things that we can't control, and that's not part of the cross. Most of the time, people pick and it causes other people to argue. They'll think, oh yeah, you're right, that person did that, and oh yeah, right and then you, it just causes problems so whatever happens you need to make a promise to God a commitment to God to come here and then to bring what you learn here to apply to yourself out in the world what you learn is constantly apply that to your life and you will learn how to apply it and how to bring it out into the world to share with other people and if you notice something causes trouble please let me know we have to be a strong family here. We have to be united. And it will help your marriage be stronger, your relationships be stronger, your work as a missionary can be stronger. Everything will be stronger through you, through uniting through Christ. Amen? Amen? Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Lord, your blessings have just been poured out on all of us. And we can see that, and we can feel that, taste it, hear it, and know and experience your blessings. And we know that you bless us every single day, but life does have problems, and there's negative things that cause us to not see you. And I pray that everyone here today can see clearly your blessing, whatever they're going through, whatever challenges they're facing, whatever hard times that they will still see there is a blessing there. And when we see that blessing, that we share that with other people. Lord, I pray your protection, and I pray that for spiritual growth to happen. And that they can learn how to see things and to fully see your joy that you've already given to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Please.